Coming to you live, it's the Auto Hub Show with Ian and Jeff. Here we go. Who said you can't teach an old dog new tricks? Hi, I'm Gail Rubenstein, the founder and CEO of a company called Retail Resilient, social selling for the car industry. And we help auto dealers, auto agencies, and vendors in the auto industry sell more cars, service more cars, and make more money using our social selling strategy. That includes TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and anything else you can think of. So if you're looking to invest thousands and make millions, we're definitely the social selling company for you. Like I said, who said you can't teach an old dog new tricks? I was at Larry Pullman's seminar. So happy I came, having such a good time. Thank you so much, Larry. One of the best trainers in this area, for sure. I don't know about anywhere else, but as far as I know, he's the best. So, um, told you to take advantage. Thank you for having me here. I'm at Larry Feldman's se uh, seminar, and what I found is that what he's really good at doing with his knowledge and with his training, he's not filling a bucket, he's lighting a fire. Ways to improve. Every month we want to improve better on what we did the month before, maybe the year before. It's about how fast we can get the cars done with quality work to get it to the front line because that's where we make our money. And the bottom line is the longer it takes, the more money you spend. We want to get it down as low as possible. Right now, like I said, we're in a great stage. We're at four and a half days. In recon, we want to know how quickly we can get the cars out of the recon process and to the front line. The average days in recon and then the time to line are the most important things that we look for. I'm Mike Burrell, I'm service director at JM Lexus. This is Jeff. And we're here at Franchise Dealers Are Cutting the Fluff, the donut. What's the background for the donut thing? I'm just curious. I, I think it's just basically saying that instead of having your rep come by and drop off donuts, like actually add oh. some value. You so, mean they do that? Yeah, well, then it's kind of a thing so that they've been doing for I a while. I don't understand what we're talking about. So these big donuts, is there like a correlation or something? Well, we, we do like our agents. However, you know, sometimes with the dealers looking forward to getting some new F&I products, a lot of times, what is the rep actually doing? So we're saying, you know, hey, drop the donuts and okay. actually get some valuable training at your store level. So we, we just rolled out uh, True University, which is a university okay. course level yeah. for dealers to be able to go through and teach themselves about our products, how to sell it, how to overcome objections, some really okay. value added uh, content for our dealers to be able to kind of self-educate. And then if they want to go direct to True Warranty, we've rolled out that model, they can essentially just get all their products from us, not okay. have somebody in the middle and it gives them that opportunity. Some, and again, some dealers like their agent and we're, we're happy to keep them. We have a lot of agents that we, we really like, but for other dealers that just want the product that know that they have the, the quality person at the store level, maybe they just want to have the savings be the benefit instead. So curious, um, how did you start doing that? Like how did you, like, for a little bit about the history of the yeah. So 15 years ago, True Warranty started and it was more or less we're a formation company working okay. with other TPAs creating the reinsurances, the, the CFCs okay. and CFCs for them. And I think what Garen, our CEO, did was kind of saw the greatest hits playlist from the other administrators. hits playlist. Yep, right. the, the best contracts that other administrators had. So okay. we saw the some of the follies, some of what they did poorly, what they did really well, and we kind of took the best parts of that and created our own program. And then the involvement of the direct program and True You was, a lot of our dealers reached out to us and just said, you know, I, I would really like to have your product but I'd like to do it in a direct way where I'm talking to you. I don't I don't want to play a game of telephone right. sometimes right. with an agent or sometimes a sub agent of a sub agent. And uh, that really helped us out quite a bit. And we, we had to follow what the people wanted. Right. People said, I want a direct model. So we went forward with that. So give people what they want. That's a, that's a good. It's, it's a weird. Want. It's a weird concept. You know, it's, it works. You know? well, just so you don't know, Jeff, just in case you don't know, Jeff is a car dealer himself. Oh, awesome. So maybe he has a car dealer centric place. Yeah. That's a centric question. Yeah, like one for the car dealers per second. Like putting your dealer hat on. I know you're a ghost, but I'm just curious. <laughs> we put him on the spot. The balance between selling a product and getting a clean car. Yeah. Because, you know, for instance, you know, I can think of a car we sold to. Sure. And the warranty company, which would be your best, um, 
basically this person took this car, they drove away, they were in another city, they went to some random and put Sure. And sure. of course, they saw the giant work in the river Canada. Yep. So this dealer was in Washington State, sure. customs Canadian. Yeah. So they saw this car. Yeah. And they condemned the car. Sure. The warranty company took the word of the independent shop. Okay. Not the people that inspected the car on third of it. Sure. So a balance there basically is, is not just you guys, just an opinion on, on who decides what. So I think it just comes down to how much time that we spend with that customer. Now we have live people that actually pick up phones in the US that you know adjudicate claims based on real empirical data. So our, our system is built where you can text in a claim with us, you can submit it online, there's a lot of different options. But I think what it, we, we've done is, instead of having a very long drawn out process that doesn't allow for a lot of engagement with the dealer and the customer, who are both our customers, we've kind of taken that and said, okay, look, send us the information for it, we're gonna have a real person adjudicate the claims, ensure that it's a it's a valid claim. And to your point, I mean, for, for us and how we operate, it's hard to say it until you've actually gone through it. It's hard for me to give you the details until you've used it, but I can tell you that Better Business Bureau, which we're not even accredited, I don't even pay to get the fluff endorsement from them. We have a 4.42 score out of five. We're the highest of any TPA that I know of. BBB, we have a 4.5 rating. And those are customers coming to us and saying, we like you guys. We're a warranty company. There's not very few people that like us, except for our dealer partners and the customers that receive the benefits from the cars, from the purchase uh, of their service contract. So I think it's just that a lot of other administrators in the market have taken away the personal portion of it and really just made it to a process of just I'm um, pushing a button is it covered is it not and that's, that's why we've done so well I think that's why and there's a lot of other great providers out there too but I think the ones that are following that model are the ones that are gaining traction in the marketplace because I can sell a cheap warranty but it doesn't cover anything the customer has a terrible experience now my reputation as a dealer is devalued my customer is upset I might have to pay for it out of pocket anyways just keep that customer from you know flaming me online so I, I understand your frustrations and I was a, a dealer. I mean, I was I ran some large auto groups at my departments in the country for 15 years before I got on this side. It's my 20th year in the industry. I know that frustration because I've had to call the the admin company to work. And, what the heck? What are you guys thinking? Either why did you approve this and destroy my reinsurance company, or why didn't you approve this and destroyed my customer relationship? So it's a fine balancing act, and those who who balance well on the wire are the ones that rise to the top. And you see, you hit the you hit the nail on the head. The customer doesn't necessarily care if it's two warranty, Fred's warranty, exactly. whatever. They care about getting something covered. The key is, is even though the, the customer is your customer, yeah. the dealer really is. And if you're not proving claims, they're going somewhere else. Yeah, and it is. It's, it's very true. They're both our customers, right? We are serving on behalf of you to your customer. And we have to treat them accordingly. So we have a very customer-centric drive towards making sure that they feel as though we were attentive. That's why... We can text in a claim. You can email a claim, true.claims, tru.claims. You can submit a claim, no joke, in less than 30 seconds. It is crazy how easy we've made it. And it's really been the reason why we've been so proactive in the market. And the fact is this particular warranty company, we dropped like a hot potato not long yeah. afterwards. Uh, other dealers that we do drop them. And uh, the bottom line is, is you know, for a thousand dollar claim, yeah. how much business did they lose? We yeah. said it was a $1,500 premium. Exactly. Yeah, why destroy your relationship? Because there are those gray area claims and you have to be flexible. We don't know. I mean, there's 30,000 parts in every vehicle. Were you able to inspect every car's part on that you before you sold it on your lot? No. I did a reasonable, solid effort to make sure it was a quality vehicle before I delivered. That's where my you know, job stops. And that's where we pick it up as the insurer saying, we trust that you've done you know, your due diligence and now it's our time to pick up that, that claim if it falls within the, the purview of the, of the contract you sold. So, yeah. So, how do dealers get started? They want they want to do it. They want to cut out the middleman. They want better service for their customers. Yeah. They want a true partner. How do they get truewarranty.com? You can go to dealer sign up there, okay. or you can contact uh, me or any of my team. So, I hit up sales. Uh, my email is just spencer at truewarranty.com. We spell true warranty weird. As you can see from the banner, there's no E in true. So is that like a you know, I think that was just something fun that our CEO did. Just like, you know, 
I should change it up a little shorten bit. It up. Yeah, shorten it up a little. Current generation, shorten it up. Yeah, you know, make everything That's a little good. bit hip. So and the funny part is, I'm sure if they Google through warranty, you guys will come out. Absolutely. But yep. They won't be the guys that fraud you and say, "Call you reach your budget and stuff like that." Yeah, and that's the funny, another funny thing. So we are one of the administrators. I, there's many, obviously, available. We don't do that. We do no phone sales. So we're not going to ever have somebody have be sold a service contract that comes to your dealership that was one of those companies that sold over the phone. We don't so you're do that. Not that company. No, we, we're the <laughs> we're the company that provides valuable products to dealers and lenders. And that's it. We don't do the phone sales thing. Yeah. Those. Oh my god. I could go on for ages about how annoying those I mean, it's such a cliche, isn't it, right? You hear about it all the time. Right? Yes, absolutely. And, and of course, now, which we get, like, the, this industry is much heavier, more heavily regulated in Canada, work yeah. insurance in general. And we don't have the people that you see. I, I can't believe how many times I come down here and see the numbers. Yeah. Well, here we have, and you can just call us now and get your car covered. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then look at the fine print, what's covered, what's yeah. not covered. It, it really has done a disservice to auto dealers because we're selling quality product and we try to pick a quality provider because that's our name on the street too as well. And it gets devalued by those companies that just ring and ring. It's yeah. anyways. Uh, so I know question. Did you were mentioning something else very Oh yeah. Uh, I'm a type one diabetic just in case people didn't know. Uh, yep. And so I cross it's important me. Recently, did an event uh, in Vancouver called Pop Kids for raising money for children with type 1 diabetes. And I know yeah. you're diabetic yourself, so maybe you could share some. Yeah, actually, if you got it, I'm type 1 diabetic too. I got my, I got my patch on, and uh, so. A couple of months ago, I really wanted to be able to give something back, and it was more or less not just something monetary, but I wanted something thinking about when I was diagnosed with diabetes at 12, how scary it was, and have not to have a whole lot of information on it. And um, you know, I used to write code in my in my younger years, and I decided I wanted to create a video game for type 1 diabetics to be able to have something like if you're recently diagnosed with a terrible disease, you have to manage your entire life. Give them something that can help educate them, be something fun. Help that something that they can play with their friends, so their friends understand, like what is what is this that my friend has? How can I help him? What happens if he has a low blood sugar? And it was a passion project for me. We're launching it, uh, pre-orders this next month, and 100% of the profits are going back to type one diabetes research. So it was something. Someone wants to sign up. How would they do that? So get, the, get get the game or donate yeah. body. So we we don't want we don't want any do donations for it. It's okay. I, I'm actually fronting 100% of the cost myself. Uh, so we didn't want any backers on it because I didn't want anybody else to manipulate it. I didn't want money from drug companies. Right. We just said, we're going to create this product. It's going to be available to anybody who wants it at cost. Yeah. And if somebody did want to order it retail, just say you're, you're not a diabetic, but maybe you yeah. want to you know, order one. They can go to guardiangamesstudio.com and we'll be able to... We'll have, yeah, they'll be able to order the game there. And probably I would say we're gonna, our pre-order countdown is on there. I don't know how many days are left for that. But uh, and then we'll be offering it. I'll be speaking next month at Diabetes Conference about it, and we're just really excited. I'm hoping to give. I'm hoping it sells like hotcakes. I'm hoping so we can give a lot of money towards finding a cure. So for the gamers out there, like, what does that mean? Like, I'm not a huge computer gamer personally. I have played games in my life. Yeah. Like, if they're wanting to get it, is there a certain console they need? Is there a certain yeah? That, that's need? a great question. So we'll have it on itch.io, okay. which is, we'll have it on Steam. And then we're actually producing it on Game Boy. So you build it. If you have an old school Game Boy, I don't want to play it on Game Boy. Game Boy. Game, yeah. Game Boy Color, yeah. uh, Game Boy Advanced, all those will be available for all those three systems. Yeah. And we did it as more of a retro feel. So it's kind of like a, a side scrolling Mega Man type game. And it's, it's really fun. It's, it's really cute. It's, it's a Diabetor and the Sugar Monsters. Diabetor and the Sugar Monsters. Diabetor and the Sugar Monsters. Kind of a fun thing. I just thought, you know, and you got a little guy, he shoots his little insulin. It's it's a fun deal. So I have to make a note of that. My daughter's boyfriend. They're they're not that young that they're they're that kind of gaming, but they'll they'll, they'll, they'll promote the idea. Diabetor and the sugar monsters. Diabetor and the sugar monsters. That's awesome. Monsters, cute. Yeah, there's 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 a lot. The whole thing is you are the insulator. Which <laughs> I know. How cheesy is it? But you're the insulator. It's like the Terminator, but with insulin, and you're you're basically attacking high carb and sugar foods and you're keeping your blood sugar in range. Just a fun thing that uh, I wanted to do to give back. We're in the car business. Cheesy is good. Yes. Cheesy sells. This is the home of, of guys smashing windshields and, and dogs and lions sitting on the hood of a car and everything else. Cheesy is good. We've yeah. got Mr. Wavy Man. What yeah. the heck? I remember the, the Badger. 
like the and car badge. I'm like, oh, they're selling, they're, they're making those dolls. Yeah. And they were buying them. Like, that took like a box of 150 yeah. bucks. But, nice, but, but it was, that was very, you know, it was nostalgic for the car business. Those people are like, oh, yeah, I knew that guy. So we just basically kind of did the same thing, but with uh, the insulator and uh, Diabitor. Yeah. So it's kind of a fun thing. Are you selling, like, the mascot, like, car box? Well, the, the character is supposed to be me, but it's hard to draw that in a 16 by 16 pixel frame. So we essentially just looks like he looks like a little Terminator with an insulin yeah. gun. So it's kind of a fun thing. That's so. awesome. Look yeah. Like, yeah, I appreciate it. That's very, you know, we just we just left somebody else earlier that uh, they're doing things for kids' cancer. And, uh, you know, something it's it's nice to see something that's more just about yeah. doing business and uh, trading donuts. Exactly. Trading donuts for dollars. Uh, there's no link on the True Warranty website, I hear, for Dunkin' Donuts. Just so you know. No, absolutely. No. Just, just saving an admin fees. No donuts. <laughs> cool. All right, cool. Thanks, Thanks guys. Appreciate I appreciate appreciate Thank both you. Of you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Good Jeff. For you. Hey, I appreciate it. I appreciate all. By that. the way, there's no way in God's green earth you're in this business 25 years, 20 years. 20 years. I'll be 40 this next year. So oh, feathers. I know it's it's it's. I'm sitting there looking. Clean this living. Been really well for you know for the 22 years old. <laughs> yeah. Clean, clean living, clean living. I can show you my. I actually, it's funny. Maybe it is just that, but there's my. <laughs> he carries it with him for you, can, you get you, ID'd if you go somewhere, don't I, you? I, last night I did. They got, you know, like everybody's at the table, and he goes to my app. I'm like, oh, sorry, okay. So it's a good thing. Good thing. Good problem to have. You know, my uh, my oldest daughter's 31, and she gets ID'd all the time. And when she was old enough to drink easily, my five, her five year younger sister didn't get ID'd because she got ID'd. So. Yeah. Good problem to have. So thanks, guys. I appreciate the, uh, the shout out for the game, too. I hope it no helps a lot of children. Awesome. Thank awesome. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thanks for joining us. It was a great show and follow us anywhere you would like on your favorite podcast on Facebook, on LinkedIn, and of course on our YouTube or subscribe to our own channel.